Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to pre-fill forms in monday.com. And I'm going to use a, an example where we're having students and students can enroll themselves with a form. And then after that, they can, uh, they get an URL, which they can open and then they can uh, update their information with pre-populated fields. So let's dive in. First of all, we're going to use a tool called Superform to do this because the native Monday Workforms solution doesn't allow you to do all the things that we needed to do. So let's dive in. But before we start with the app, we need to have a basic board structure. So here we have a group of active students, a group of inactive students, uh, an email column, a status column, a date of birth and the interests. Well, you can obviously change this to your needs and it's mostly to show you what's possible uh, so you can adjust it to you, your, uh, your use case. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to go to the Monday marketplace to install the Superform app. So here on the top right hand side, you see Monday marketplace and you type Superform and here you'll find it. So what's good to know about Superform, it's an app, so it has a price tag but there is a free plan, so you can just uh, work along. Uh, but keep in mind that it actually gets relatively expensive depending on uh, yeah, how many form submissions you need. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind when you start using this app. But if you, for example, are a small user, you can use the free plan, or if you wanna try it out and figure out if this actually works for you, you can also use the free plan. So let's get back. You would click on use app on the bottom left hand side and then you uh, decide where to install the app it doesn't really matter where you do this uh, but what i would recommend is only doing it in the workspaces where you would actually use it to prevent the app from you know showing uh, to, to prevent from showing any data to the app that you don't want it to show so in my case it's the workspace main and the board pre-populate forms tutorial you click click add app and then within a few seconds, you'll see the uh, Superform app. You might need to click on authorize. So if you see an authorize button, you would click there and you would authorize um, Superform to add items to your board, to read the information from your board. And therefore I say, keep in mind that you don't allow too much access to this app because yeah, you're working with maybe potentially vulnerable and private data. So make sure that you only give access to the board you'd like to get uh, to give access to. Awesome. So when you have Superform, it looks something like this. You can find it as a view. So this was the normal view that I showed. And now you see the form here. Um, and as you can see, it loaded all the uh, columns that we created. Well, this is very similar to the Monday work forms solution. So there sh shouldn't be any uh, very yeah, new things here. Um, yeah, you can change the names. So we can, for example, say first, uh, maybe student name, and we can even make conditional questions. We say it's required or not, if it's visible or not with the eye icon, um, or we can change some settings with the settings icon. Well, lots of stuff to discover, but let's dive into our specific use case. Um, so let's, if I preview this form, what you'll see is just the student name, the email, the status, um, which I should probably hide the status because we're going to set the status automatically. So let's hide that one. Um, then date of birth, interests are a few options. And the update, I will also hide that one because uh, the update would actually be the update that you would see here. Uh, so this thing. So if you want people to write updates like this, you can allow them to, but in my case, I don't want to. So I have uh, hidden that field. Awesome, let's get back to the form. Um, so I think, yeah, this is all I need. Obviously you can make the form a little more pretty with you know some images and you can give it a name. Uh, but in my case for the tutorial, that doesn't really matter, but for your case, it might be. Um, so if you go into the settings, you can also add more things like your own logo. So let's, for example, add a photo of myself just as an example. Um, and here are some other things such as the messages that you can change, the button text, all that kind of stuff. So feel free to play around with it and then click on save. And as you can see, if I refresh my form, it will now look something like this. Oh, the logo didn't update well. 
anyways, that's not really important for this tutorial. Cool, so what's now um, situation is that if I fill in my name, Patrick, and my email, Patrick test at patrick.com as an example, and we say my date of birth is, uh, well, the 1st of uh, May, and I like volleyball and basketball, and I submit the form, it works very similar to a normal form. Like, yeah, nothing really interesting has happened so far. And as you see in the form, it just showed up uh, in the board. Now, this is where it gets interesting. What you need to do is you need to add a column, which is the link column. And this link column will be the, um, you can call it the update link column. And I'll show you what we're going to do now. We're going to the automation center and you go to integrations on the bottom left hand side and here you'll type super form. And if you don't see any, uh, something pop up yet, just wait a few seconds, you know, remove the text and type it again, because usually it takes a little longer to load the uh, apps for the first time. So yeah, you might experience some delay there. Uh, it will show up, but it might take five to 10 seconds. So just, you know, do this remove it and type it again and at some point it will show up cool so what we need to do in our case is we're going to say when an item is created generate a link to update the form and put the link in this column with a text um, and i'll show you what we're going to do so let's click here uh, the form in this case is oh we don't have an update form yet so we're going to create it in a second um, we should actually do that first <laughs> Good to know. Um, so what we had here is we have a form that creates the, um, yeah, that creates the record. So let's call it create student form. And we're going to use a similar form. So I'll just duplicate this one, which will be the update student form. And there's one big difference between the two, which is if you go into settings, there's this toggle which has insert or update, and we're going for update. And as you can see here, there's a security notice which kind of basically says, hey, pay attention. If you do this, people can update stuff in your board, so make sure you actually want that to happen. So you click I understand. Then if you want, by the way, you can quite easily uh, lock it with a password. So if you only want to show it to a few people, feel free to lock it. Uh, yeah, that makes most sense. Then you go into save and now it's an update uh, form. So if I preview this, what you'll see is it will load all the items from the board, which in my case is only one student. And if you click here, you can actually change the data and submit it. So it's pretty cool. But there's one big problem and that is that you can now select all students in this board, whereas you would actually only want to show one student and not all of them. So Let's fix that. So we're going to the tutorial board again, to the main table. And now we're going to actually create the automation that I just wanted to create. Um, so let's type Superform and go to the same automation. Now, if I click on update Superform, it will actually show a Superform uh, form. And then you click there and you put it in the link column that we just created with the text, maybe, um, update link could be anything doesn't really matter it's just a text and then if you click add to board you have this automation and what this does very simply said is when you create a uh, new student in my case it will show a link here and that link is super important because if you use that link you will be able to update this record in particular so no other records only this record so let's show that so let's create a new student. Um, let's do this one. I'll just change the names real quick. Otherwise it's a bit confusing. So create student and we call this update student. And with create student, I'm going to preview the form and let's call this person John Doe, john at doe.com. And his date of birth is, let's say, um, here and he likes to play football let's submit the form and what you'll see 
in the main table is that John Doe now has a record, but here you see an update link. And if I click on this update link, you'll see this, which is all the details of John. So John can now edit his own information. So let's say we misspelled John, his name is not Doe, but uh, I don't know, uh, John the tester. Then we click up, uh, submit. And what you'll see in the form, or sorry, in the board, is that John's name now changed to John the tester. So by doing this, you allow other people without giving access to the board to change information within your Monday board. So keep in mind that obviously if they can't change it, you need to put some boundaries in there and make sure that they only can change what you'd like them to change. Um, but it's pretty good with regards to things like, you know, approving content. Let's say you have a LinkedIn post that you created for a client. You can say, hey, this is the link, good luck. Um, just click the status column and say approved or needs feedback. And then you put in your feedback and then you can work together in a way that people don't have to open Monday, but can just open a simple form. Um, one last step could be to actually send this link to the student after he signed up or she. Um, so what we can do is we can say automate. Uh, let's go to the templates again and type email. We would, in my case, I use Gmail, so I would use Gmail as an example. And I would say, where is it? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, actually, I would actually create it from scratch because what I would like to do, um, let's go here, add automation. What I would like to do is when an item is created, so when a student creates himself, uh, it, the student gets an email that says, hey, if you want to ever update your information, just go to this link. So what we do is when an item is created, then we send an email, there you go. In my case, with the account already uh, authorized. If you don't have anything authorized yet, you need to authorize it first. And then you send an email to, uh, for example, student update link, hi. And then you can even do hi, student name in this case, um, you can update your details here. Update link, greetings, Patrick. So that uh, works. Then um, we can go from here. We can send it to the person in the email column. So let's do that and create the automation. Now I'm going to pause the video real quick to find my, uh, to open up my test email. So I just opened up my test email in another tab and now I'm going to show you how the full flow works. So let's create the student once again, let's preview it. And in this case, I say my name is uh, Eva Doe and my email is this because that's my test email. My date of birth is for example here and I like to play volleyball and football. Then I submit the form, and as you can see, it's submitted. Uh, as you can see here, it's also set up here with an update link. And if I go into my email, you'll see, there you, you have it here. Hi, Eva Doe, you can update your details here. Greetings, Patrick. Oh, the link actually didn't populate, so that's interesting. Ah, I see why, it's because we're this is actually an interesting thing about Monday. So what we're doing is we're triggering two automations when an item is created. What happens here is that because they trigger at the same time, the link is not there yet when um, um, the link is not there yet when we're, when we're sending the email. So we should actually change the trigger. Uh, so I'm going to copy the text so I don't have to rewrite it again. And let's say when a column changes, and then we say when an update link changes. So first we're waiting till the link is there, and only when the link is in the column, we'll send the email, because then we're sure that the link is there. So let's send it again. We do the same steps as we just did. Just copy to the text, uh, student update link, and we send it to the person in the email column. 
but let's update the automation. Just one simple tip, if you're uh, testing, you can keep using the form obviously to import or to add new information, but you would go through your uh, form credits quite quickly, especially if you're on the free plan. So what you can do is just right click and duplicate it because when you duplicate it, it's the same trigger as when you create an item. So let's just duplicate it. You have the same situation as you see here. And now I should receive a new email within a few seconds. There you go. New email. And as you can see, it now has the link. So if I uh, open the link, I can actually update my name. So let's say my name was not uh, Eva Doe, but it's more like Eva Test. Then I can submit it. And as you can see here, it's now changed to Eva Test. So this is actually how you would create forms with an app like uh, Superform and how you would uh, automatically enable the people that enrolled to update their own for, um, yeah, records. Obviously you can use it, this in many different use cases. Just, just one simple example with students, but there's tons and tons of use cases for this app. Uh, I would highly recommend that you try it out. It's a pretty cool app and it works uh, very well. And it's, as far as I know, the only app at this moment that allows you to pull data from a board um, and update it again. Uh, there's a lot more use cases with this app that I'll make videos about in the future. So if you're curious about that, just uh, subscribe and leave a like. And if you want to know any specific use cases, just leave a comment and uh, I'll be happy to cover it in a future video. If you have a very specific use case that you don't know how to solve or you'd like to have help with, just send me a message. Happy to jump on the call with you and discuss your project and then we'll look into how we can solve it. Hopefully you like this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.